Hey everybody, I'm here in the studio with one of my current portraits I'm working on of uh, Sharon Littig, and some of you may know Sharon. Uh, she's a really fine Impressionist painter here in Annapolis, and she was actually um, my first art teacher when I was about uh, 12 or 13 years old. I used to go to um, an art center after school called Maryland Hall, and um, I remember she had, she had us copying um, old master paintings and I still have that, well, I sold that painting, uh, <laughs> incidentally, much later to my brother-in-law. It was a um, acrylic painting of a Franz Howells portrait. But anyway, I just, I wanted to mention that because, um, you know, um, teachers can have a, a great impact on people, young people in, in particular. So, so the business of art training is, I do take uh, seriously. And um, Sharon's uh, future husband, John Ebersberger, went on to become my mentor um, from like maybe 14 to, you know, I don't know, age 30 or so. So I still talk to both of them and, and uh, they commissioned me to, to, to now do a sculpture of Sharon. So it's kind of an interesting full circle story where she was my first art teacher and now I'm doing a sculpture of her. Um, but I, I bring this up because uh, Lime Academy just released their summer workshop series and I'm going to be teaching a uh, portrait sculpture class in August. And um, thankfully, Chad Fisher, my uh, friend and colleague, is now the, the sculpture chair at Lime Academy. And it's really a blessing because he's, he's really bringing in the best uh, figurative uh, sculptors, uh, not just from America, from all over the world, to Lime Academy. And if you don't know Lime Academy, it's an art school in Old Lime, Connecticut. And um, interesting story, I, I considered going there when I dropped out of art college when I was about 19. Um, this is probably 2004 or three. And um, I was really unhappy with the Maryland Institute in uh, Baltimore and I was looking to transfer and um, I, I wanted to go to Lyme Academy to study with Dean Keller. Um, uh, an interesting twist there, Dean Keller died that winter that I dropped out of art school. So I didn't end up going there, but um, I remember visiting there. I remember um, a rep coming to, uh, to, to Maryland Institute to meet with me in my apartment. It was really uh, interesting. So, but uh, that's another thing that's come full circle. I wanted to go to Lyme Academy. Now I'm teaching there. So uh, when uh, Chad Fisher was calling around the, the, the different instructors, he, he called me and we were trying to figure out what kind of workshop should I teach? You know, what we we're trying to figure out what do I bring to the table that's unique uh, in the world of figurative sculpture? Because there, you know, there's there's sculptors that do um, they do uh, figures. Um, some do big monuments. You know, some do carving. Some do uh, terracotta fired pieces. So all kinds of different um, you know, there's relief relief sculptors. All kinds of different sculptors out there. And um, we all have a different set of skill, skill sets. So um, as I was talking to Chad, I realized, hey, my portrait, my uh, background comes from portrait painting and portraiture. Um, Chad and I actually met in a, a Cedric Egley studio. Cedric Egley became my, my portrait uh, painting mentor, um, you know, right about the time I, um, I uh, dropped out of school. So. So that's where Chad and I met through Steve Perkins. Steve Perkins was teaching a workshop in Cedric Studio here in Maryland. And um, it just occurred to me that, you know, uh, for all the things I've done, landscape, still life, um, figure painting, sculpture, figurative sculpture, um, my, my, my core focus has always been the portrait. You know, I think, I think that's something unique. And not everyone who does figurative art is a portrait artist. I think that's an important distinction that I've talked to with a number of famous portrait artists about, uh, certainly at the Portrait Society of America conferences. Um, you know, you can debate whether all the, the paintings in that um, finalist room are actually portraits or not. And, um, you know, they're all figurative, certainly, but, but what makes a portrait? Maybe you can, we, we can debate what's, what's a good definition for a portrait. And uh, I haven't thought about it a ton, yet but you know as far as a as far as a linguistic definition but um uh, i suppose you know just off the top of my head it would be 
celebrating the individual, right? If you believe that, that each human being uh, has a soul, if you believe that we're all, um, you know, important and we have our own, our own ideas and our own, um, I think the soul is probably the, the core of it. So that's, that's kind of what drives me to it. You, you kind of find that there's something interesting about everyone, you know, and that's, that can also be our downfall as, as empathetic people who love people, portrait artists, is that we see the good in everyone too. So you have to be careful that you don't get taken advantage of as well. Um, so anyway, I think that's what I bring to the table. I think that's what I'm gonna bring to line this summer. So if, if you're considering you know, signing up for a class there, um, I'll be your portrait guy, okay? And we're gonna talk about a number of topics in this workshop. It's gonna be a discussion on the action of, of the portrait. You know, there's action to a portrait, just like there's action to a, a whole figure. Um, we're gonna talk about uh, proportions. Proportions tell you a lot of things. They tell you, uh, number one, you know, the age of a person, right? Male, male or female, that's important. Um, what else? Lifestyle of a person. Um, you know, you're gonna have a very different proportion if you sit around on the couch all day versus being outside laboring, for instance. So, so proportions for a portrait artist are tremendous. And there's an argument to be made that if you if you get everything in the right spot, well, that's that's like 80% of the portrait. It's gonna at least look like the person. Now that's not everything in portraiture, but, but I think it's very important. Um, we're gonna talk about uh, organic rhythms that, that unite the, the whole thing together, right? Because, uh, you know, in figurative art, you're dealing with a lot of, a lot of components, a lot of anatomy, um, a lot of measurements, a lot of parts. How do you, how do you coordinate it? So we're gonna talk about rhythmic relationships, linear, um, rhythms. And um, we'll talk about some gross anatomy. Gross anatomy would be like the bones, the muscles, tendons, fat pads, skin, hair, all that crazy stuff. And, um, you know, I almost wish I could just download that into your brain because it's important, but it's nothing, mm, nothing secretive, really. Nothing, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of factual, right? It's knowledge-based. So um, I always tell the story that I have um, a lot of doctors in my classes and uh, very smart people, lawyers, dentists, plastic surgeons. I think uh, art does attract uh, those types, uh, especially when, they, when they, they get to retirement age, they wanna start doing more art, artistic uh, things. Uh, but you know, I, always, I always tell that story that I can have a very smart person, let's say a plastic surgeon in my class who, um, who knows you know, more about the cartilage of the nose than I do, let's say, or the, the ear cartilage or whatever. And I can walk around the, the studio and their, their, their first attempt at a sculpture can be an absolute mess. You know, just totally like, really? I mean, are you even, are, do you even see the beauty of the model? Can you, you know, how is this possible that, that such a brilliant person with great um, academic training and uh, decades of experience could make something so, so decrepit and ugly, you know? And I think it, um, what, what, what it tells me is that there's more to it than just anatomy. It's all the stuff I just mentioned. And the, and the final piece that I think I can really bring to the table, which is something that thankfully my, my mentor, Cedric Egley, really, um, really hammered down and drilled down into me is the importance of geometry in the spirit of the uh, ancient Greeks, let's say. And this is a um, sort of the mathematics of nature. Um, there's, some, there's some really interesting uh, books and, and, and you know, documentaries on, on what, what is geometry and what, um, you know, how it relates to music and, and um, you know, design, architecture, um, certainly figurative art. You can think of the golden mean as a good example. And um, I think that's what I bring to the table that's unique. And I would just view it as, you know, what's geometry? Why is it so important? It sounds kind of elementary geometry, like something you learn in like, you know, seventh grade and you just, that's it. Um, but really it's how we, it, it gives us a system to coordinate all of the gross anatomy, all the little parts. You know, it's like you can do ecroche, but, but uh, I remember Steve Perkins always said to me, 
Steve Perkins is my sculpture teacher, who will also be teaching at Lyon Academy. He said that um, sometimes when you learn anatomy, your work gets worse, right? You can actually, you might know more terms, but you're going, you're backpedaling, you're going downhill, you know? Um, and I think that's really true, that sometimes when we're naive and young and we're just talented, we can make something quite innocent and beautiful. And then when we start to, start to we try to incorporate, um, uh, you know, knowledge into our work, sometimes it gets kind of piecemeal and, and uh, maybe morbid looking, right? So we don't want that look, right? But a, a, a human body that's alive is not um, macabre. You know, it's not, it's not like a corpse. It's not kind of inward. It's very robust and alive. And, and Steve always said that indeed we have blood pressure, which is why we're convex, right? Which is why, you know, we appear to be symmetrical and, and, uh, and alive. So, um, I think that's just a few thoughts on that, and I um, just wanted to you know, give you a little sneak peek into my portrait of Sharon um, and, uh, and announce that August workshop. I think it's the third week in August, uh, 2024. So I'll be up there. It's a beautiful studio. It's a skylit, skylit um, sculpture studio. It was designed uh, specifically for, for sculpture. And they have um, uh, really an amazing antique collection of casts, plaster casts at the school. So we have plenty of references there. Um, they just have a number of cool things. I think there's some Bridgman drawings hung up. Um, there's, there's a lot of fine American sculpt, sculpture, French sculpture. Um, and it's a quaint little town. And actually, you know, August is a beautiful time to be in New England. So, so I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, I'll, I'll put a comment in my link tree and I'll put a comment below here, wherever you're watching this, whether it's YouTube or, or um, Facebook or Instagram, whatever. I guess Instagram, you can't do a, you can't do a link, but I'll put it in the, the link tree. So um, anyway, um, hope to see you soon and uh, happy sculpting.